From the moment Sam and I arrived in Africa, you could tell that it was really stressful for him. Sam, you're going to get hand stabbed. I don't want to do a headstand. No, 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 no. no. You have to do it. No. And it was also stressful for me. Never! Here I was in Africa for the first time myself with a 14-year-old boy on the autism spectrum hoping that he would be able to develop what are called his adaptive skills. Shut up! You'll be a very mean to me! I was actually starting to have doubt and thinking, this is a stupid idea, this is crazy, this is not going to work. And then, while we were still in Cape Town, Sam did something. You talk as long as you possibly can. He had this conversation with the woman who owned the hostel we were staying in. And for the first time in his life, he prolonged a conversation by himself. Have you been, ever been to Australia? I have. He suddenly turned around to her and said, so, have you ever been to Australia? I felt a tingle down my spine when it happened. And I realised that the only reason he did it was we were providing him so much more opportunity to do so. I suddenly thought, maybe we're onto something. Maybe this stuff can work. But you wouldn't believe the amount of drama, personal anguish and soul searching it took for us to get here. to love. Ah! People might think that the disability makes him less lovable. But in many ways, it's made my love deeper for him. We've got two older boys, Matthew and Nicholas. This one, however, was a little bit different. And we, Venice and I both knew it. We could pick up that there were a few issues going on here. Hello. The day that Sam got his diagnosis of autism, I remember vividly. It was awful. You start immediately thinking, oh my God, what's going to happen in the future? And almost a panic. Let's stand together. And we pretty soon figured out that intensive early intervention was the best option. Four. Hat. Quads. It was a huge effort um, and basically transformed our lives. Our family became friends with the best because obviously we had this shared experience and there was a great camaraderie and, and how we manage autism in our families. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful brushing. Well done. What's great about James and Benison is they didn't just look at autism and how it manifested itself in their family. They immediately turned to the wider community and both of them thought uh, immediately about how they could contribute. I mean, Benison literally wrote the book, the Australian Autism Handbook. James has constantly donated his time. I'm a GP in the west of Sydney and with Sam being diagnosed with autism, I sort of became more interested, not only in autism, but in children with disability in general. And so my practice has really gone in that direction now. Sam, come on, on. Mommy. No, I'm not carrying it, it's your bag. You need to carry it. Bob best bits. Where Sam is on the autism spectrum, he's probably about middle of the range. Oh, it's uncomfortable in the car. It is actually uncomfortable. <laughs> His social skills are patchy. He can be very charming and very funny, but he can also completely miss messages from other people and say inappropriate and sometimes even um, rude things at times that get misinterpreted. I'm not being racist. Well, that's staring at people being rude. Sorry. Staring for rude. Sorry. He noticed. I think there is a tendency by professionals and parents to wrap their children in cotton wool, particularly if that child has autism, and to reduce the unpredictability of their day-to-day -day lives, to minimise the kinds of effects that anxiety can have on the young person. Cavis, um, lemonade. 320, please. Thank you very much. What we postulated was the best for our child was different to other people. Thank you. There you go. Look, I saw red. Thank you. 
We do know that the way the brain changes in teenage years is quite profound. Adolescence is often referred to as the second infancy, a whole lot of new growth. We were acutely aware that it was a time of opportunity. The conventional approach just wasn't going to be good enough for us because we thought here is an opportunity that we wanted to grab. It just made scientific sense to us. Our considered solution to that was to expose him to a prolonged period of uncertainty and unpredictability, to develop his ability to deal with challenges in life. Well, pro it has to be 12 countries in total. Well, that, that's... But if it has to be, it cannot be more than 12. OK. Right. Then we started thinking, well, how are we going to roll this out? What are we actually going to do? And we started formulating around the idea of a trip. We had to get him out of his environment. Are we going to UK? Nope. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Can I show you where we're going? So in the end, we decided on Africa. Are we going to Africa for a whole year? Huh? We're going for six months to Africa. It provided bucket loads of uncertainty and unpredictability. And Sam had a little bit of an obsession at the time about African animals, so that was the clincher. David, nice good to, to meet you. Good, good to, to meet you. you. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, pleasure. This way of thinking, this different way of thinking, really does go against the wisdom in the field. And what James and Benison are doing are basically throwing out that um, rule book. So when are you when are you going to Africa? One of the very first things that came into our mind was, well, this is unusual, it's an intervention of sorts. And being both of scientific background, we thought we want to document it and we want to record it. What we're planning is Sam and I are going to be backpacking, uh, basically, around Africa, starting in Cape Town. My job is to track the progress as they go through this trip. I'm really glad you're interested in it. Nothing like this has been done before, as far as I'm aware. Usually what we do is we take a, a research environment and we try and replicate the real world. What we're doing here is we're taking the real world and we're attempting to wrap research around it. So this is the emergency letter that we've written this morning with some anxiety for Sam. This is what he gives someone else if he gets separated. The reaction generally when we started telling people was astounding. It was like, what are you doing? He will not be able to manage on his own. What about all the dangers? Uh, you know, how can you do this? It's, it's crazy. Are you nuts, was what I said, yeah. I was really mean about it. <laughs> uh, because this was the opposite of James, you know, Mr Sensible, Mr Doctor, Mr Always Follow the Science, and all of a sudden he's telling me this hair-brained scheme to take his son through Africa. I tried to be supportive, but mostly I just laughed. Do you have any particular shirts that you want to yes. post? Which one? This trip to Africa is a great idea and I support it, but it comes at a cost and that's the house. I've had to sell the house and I really didn't want to do that at all. I'm a bit nervous about going in aeroplanes. Are you? I'm worried that it might, I might get hurt. I want to go buy a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> However, the whole Africa trip almost didn't happen. You know, the aeroplanes are really, really safe. A week or two before Sam and I were due to depart for Africa, there was a knock on the door while I was home and I was accused of and charged with sexual assault and our whole world came crashing down. I had to surrender my passport to the police. I felt uh, shock, um, anger, um, some resentment. Um, but overwhelmingly, I wanted to be there for him, actually. The person involved was not a patient, but I'm unable to say much more because of a non-publication order that came out of the courts. I was determined to defend my innocence, and I was also determined to make sure that Sam's trip to Africa still happened. But I might die. You're not going to die. Not on my watch, mister. I was completely shocked about the news because it didn't gel with the James best that I know. But James was completely determined to do this with Sam and nothing was going to stop him. I don't know how he did it under that amount of pressure, but he was determined to do so. Come on, sir. In order to get bail, Venice and I had to put 
a large sum of money up for surety and Benison had to hand over her passport. <laughs> Just over two months later, Sam and I finally hit the road. Yeah. It's not happy. Just a bit sad about not seeing you for a while. Bye. I'm really, really going to miss you. Our initial plan was to make the trip at least six months, because we feel we needed that length of time to really make a significant difference. How will I know whether it works or not? I won't know for sure. I know it's the right thing at this point to give it a whirl. We want Sam to be independent. That's our end game. He can play the piano and he can read music and he can reprogram computers and he picks up maths like that. But he can't go to the shop and buy something by himself. He can't have a normal long conversation with a friend. What are you interested in, Sam? What are things are you interested in? Come on, do oh, Jade. Nothing. These are the sort of life skills that we want him to be able to do. And this is our opportunity to teach him those skills. What are you doing? No, no, no. We in grass. Sam, that's not good form. It's outside someone's bedroom. That's not nice. I'm fed up of hearing scientists say that we don't know anything about adolescents with autism and then not doing anything about it. Yes. Wait, wait, now where are you going? James and Benison, they're doing something about it. They're creating the gold standard intervention, which is purely about intensity, interaction, learning opportunities, capitalising on those and, and hopefully reaping the benefits. Jab, cross, left hook. Jab, cross, left hook. Ouch. One of the first activities we did as a brain remodelling exercise was actually boxing on top of Table Mountain, which may have looked odd at the time. Swivel, 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 swivel. I'm thinking of things that will increase traffic across the midline of the brain, so things that use both sides of the body. I want you to use your hip. That's pretty good, that's better. Hold well on, hold well on. For a guy who went to physiotherapy for five years to get some of his motor stuff uh, looked at, um, that was pretty good. Our trip is all about exposing Sam to new situations, to things that he doesn't feel quite comfortable with, the things that he hasn't quite encountered before, and to do so lots and lots and lots of times. This is hard, what we're doing. This is very, very hard. This is horrible. And the person who does it hardest is Sam. Um, well, I think Sam's had enough, so I won't push him any further. How but, um, I still think he, he got something, a lot out of it, really. Um, he saw some an aspect of the culture that uh, he would never, never normally be exposed to. Any animals at the moment? Found rhino. This is this is not fantasy. No, it's not fantasy. No, it's right. Look at the real rhino in the wild. We're not expecting everyone to sort of troop off to some far-flung country with their child for six months and or anything like that. But if it is about introduction to change and about um, taking them away from technology, yes. I think it could lead to new thinking about autism. So uh, this is my first go at this, so we'll see how we go. A lot of the time we were trying to focus on Sam's ability to have conversations. I have, I, I, and I live in, in Summer Hill. We encouraged him to have conversations with me, conversations with strangers, uh, ordering a meal. OK, so you go and order. Beef and cheeseburger with chips. His ability to have what's referred to as a prolonged reciprocal conversation, he really couldn't do that. 
看一下。Sam, how are you? My name's Sam. Hello, Sam. What time were you up this morning? Do you know? I don't know where long season's Africa. Oh, that's a change of topic. This is for Sam. Wow. What I'm finding is wherever I go, as soon as people realise that Sam's special needs, that um, they come to help. It's, it's really heartwarming. <laughs> You're great, Dad. Did you do this? Yeah. I take my hat off you. Oh, thank you. I'm actually finding it harder than I thought I would. And also, I'm, miss I'm missing home. I'm missing Benison a lot. James certainly, while he was in Africa, was worried about these allegations against him, these charges against him, and how he would deal with them when he got back. And if I am found guilty, I will go to jail. And I will go to jail for two years and I may not be able to ever practice as a doctor again. We will be financially ruined if I'm found guilty. But I do think it was almost life-saving him going to Africa um, because it gave him a purpose and um, something else to focus on. So we're halfway through our trip. And there certainly have been moments where I thought I've bitten off more than I can chew. Africa is delivering in spades in unpredictability and chaos and uncertainty. Had an absolutely fantastic day. Uh, really good, amazing. Um, and considering this is a boy who took 10 minutes of convincing to actually go into the water in Lake Malawi, that was phenomenal. He jumped in the water several times by himself, like spontaneously. Uh, absolutely astonishing. I was swimming in the Nile River. <laughs> uh, I couldn't believe it. Sam obtained this real jump in his self-belief and self-esteem. And his world just expanded in that one or two hours. <laughs> You say, I don't see all these bites that might mean you've got malaria. So we've really... No, no! So, ah! you know, ah! you... Sam got really sick in Uganda and I was really worried it was malaria. No, no, no! This is footage I really didn't want to shoot. It's been night. Sam's deteriorated. His fever is just out of control. How are you feeling, Sam? Really, how are you feeling? Feel okay? There are risks involved in doing this, and there are still risks to come. What are the worst things that can happen? The number one worst thing was we both die. Sam's had a rough couple of days. It looks like the crisis has passed. His fever has finally settled. And um, so we can now get back to doing what we were doing before, I suppose. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Yeah? My name is Eduardo. Um, I'm from Brazil. I'm from Sydney, Australia. So we've given James a program of activities to do in Africa. I'm 34 now. So he's been sending back videos regularly so we can monitor Sam's progress. We're really interested in his conversation skills. Have you got any Harry Potter? I didn't expect us to see the conversations going as well as they are, to be honest. And we have seen a 192-year-old tortoise. We're seeing subtle, but I think gradual, changes in Sam's social and communication skills. We're seeing him maintain conversations for longer. We're seeing him find it easier to, to get some flow in the conversation, to stick on a topic, to make eye contact. It seems easier on the communication partners as well. OK, Sammy, what's the date today? September. September, the last month we're away, yeah? Yeah. So we're going to change in the rules. Okay, from now on, you are in charge, not me. Do you think you can lead the way? Yep. I'm confident 
enough to say that there is change. He plays chess, he boxes, he ties his shoelaces, he brushes his teeth by himself, he plans getting ready and getting out of the room by himself, he can pack a pack. That's a really good move. There is no way in the world I could have done all, uh, all of these things with him if I'd stayed at home. No way in the world. Um, a chicken sandwich and, and Sprite for me and the seafood platter with what? Two drinks. He just chats now. It's just much easier. It used to be hard work before. And he just really didn't have that idea that when someone says something, you say something back. And now it just, just happens. What school you been to? School, I didn't go. Why? Because it's that long time, we were, the, the time I was young, not school near to us. So and how did you learn without going to school? I came... One friend who really noticed a change was a family friend of ours from Sydney who met up with us in Zanzibar. So I joked with James when we first got here that before we left, yeah, I never, he never spoke. And then when I got here, we couldn't show him up. Um, <laughs> I really think it is much more likely that Sam will be able to do things like have a relationship and have a job now than it was at the beginning of the trip. I go to use my night to take all of the pieces. And so I'm pretty damn pleased to be able to say that. Do you think you might be a bit different? Yeah. In what way? With hair. <laughs> what else? Top height. Apart from your physical appearance, do you think you've changed as a person? From a boy to a person? Yeah. All right. I'm very proud of him, I must say. He never stops trying, and he never stops smiling as he's trying. He's a real trooper. Uh, he's an incredibly brave young boy. What's that? It's a person. What's that? I'll go throw you, Ben. No, you're not. <laughs> Handing the reins over to James, I really think it helped their relationship a great deal. It made. James, the primary carer, the primary therapist, and so naturally that meant that they, they grow, grew closer as a result of that, and I think that's a bond that will never be broken now. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's eight, been a, a wonderful and life-changing experience to do this with Sam. Good. One more 20. I feel quite elated, especially when he has, does something special and out of the blue. You just feel like punching the air. Is that powerful? Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Ow. <laughs> Ow. For me, it Ow. was just a beautiful love story. Following this project and watching James, it's, it's a love story between a father and a son. It's James's attempt to do absolutely everything he can to make sure Sam has his best outcome, reaches his greatest potential. So, first of all, we're going to have a greeting. Can you give me an example of a greeting? Hi. Hi. How are you? I thought it would be a good idea to work on Sam's skills to be able to deliver a speech to his class when he returned to school. I have enjoyed Africa a bit. The good things about Africa are the animals such as rhinos, cheetahs, lions, and we met lots of people, we met lots of tourists and locals. Overall, I have learnt a lot. Thank you. Excellent. Well done. Very good. Day D day. Departure day. I'm definitely ready to go home. I'm looking forward to my bed and my shower, my wife. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> okay, let's go. I'm emotionally quite uh, exhausted. I'm certainly quite nostalgic. A little bit sad. As I was returning home, the charges I was facing added to the complexity of feelings I had. The period leading up to the trial was very stressful, very busy, and uh, it took a long time to come to trial. Eventually it came to a trial lasting some days in September last year, and a jury were able to reach a verdict in about 30 minutes or less, and I was acquitted, which was a great relief to us all. I was able to go back to work without restrictions. It was just this huge weight <laughs> being lifted from us. This had been hanging over our heads for 
20 months and suddenly it was gone. There's a huge risk here when you put your family story out into the Australian media, you leave yourself open to other interpretations of your character. Many people have told him to be wary of it. I, I'm one of them that is concerned for him, concerned that this court case will overshadow the greater autism story that's there to be told. But James was persistent. There was no way he's going to stop. I took all of those videos of you talking with Dad. I think this, you know, this study, this journey could shake up the field of autism. This questionnaire looked at how many things you're doing. What we see is a far more relaxed, comfortable kid. We see the conversations flowing much more smoothly. Encourage frequently, that's a common theme always. We've got some data to show that Sam is going, say, from 20% on particular skills to 50%. To me, it feels like there was quite a meaningful change in the language. I think this journey has the potential to change the way that we look at supporting teenagers in the field of autism because of this idea of taking risks, pushing boundaries and having very high expectations. In my view, I think it is groundbreaking because it's a really amazing example of where a family's taken a huge chance and it seems to have, have paid off for them. Six months is not an incredibly long time. So I don't think you would talk about this African trip being a breakthrough in autism research. But I think it could provide a template for other families to map what is going to be possible for their child. They can take them out of the routine environment, out of the ordinary day to day. But if done in a scaffolded way, that that young person can rise to meet that challenge. I'm more grown up after this. In what way? I've been learning to talk to people more often, and thanks to Dad for <laughs> making me more mature. <laughs> I don't want people to think that I have found some sort of solution for autism. We haven't. But I do think that we have certainly raised some interesting questions that I hope will lead to further research in this area that adolescence in people on the autism spectrum is a time of opportunity. I absolutely think the trip was worth it. The benefits are still there. They're still apparent. And this is me. When me and Dad, we went to Robin Island and visited Saul and visited Nelson Mandela's prison cell. And he spent there for 18 years. Sam finally got to deliver his speech to his class. Then we went to a school in Zambia and, the, and there was no electricity and no computers and I taught the teachers how to use Word on, on Dad's computer. <laughs> and then at last we went back to the Sydney airport and the trip was over. This is footage for a documentary that may be filmed in Australia and shown overseas as well. Shown over Australia, shown overseas as well. And it's also maybe used for footage for a, um, for a research project through Griffith University. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Yes? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and get a game over. So I wish I was funny as you. But you're not. Mm. They get they get the scared laugh. You know, laugh. Where are you going? Oh. That makes a mosquito. What's that? I'm going to eat the mosquito. I'm going to pretend to be a frog. Be Uncle Vernon. I'll be a frog. Be Uncle Vernon.